Well, I'm, I'm delighted to be here, and I think this reunion is is a very useful thing for us, for all of us, to hear the voices of other people being censored. Um, finally, back on Twitter again. Um, why was I censored? Um, basically, for, for the usual kinds of reasons, um, for mentioning, for questioning the, the, the idea of universal vaccination, um, for reporting on the use of ivermectin in India and Mexico to treat COVID, um, for critiquing the pharma pharmaceutical industry and listing their history of fraud and deception, which is a, an objective history, which is documented and is factual. And, and so uh, the two platforms I was suspended from um, permanently uh, were Twitter and LinkedIn. I'm back on Twitter now. I'm still off LinkedIn. And uh, also a blog, a blogging platform called Medium took me down. Well, they just took down a post for reporting on my suspension from Twitter. Now, what does this tell me? Uh, my own story, just like everyone else's. It tells me that misinformation is a proxy for for basically tyranny, for tyrannical um, control of information. Um, and because the way misinformation is implemented, if you just look at how it's actually implemented, the rule of misinformation, you will see that it is implemented in a completely arbitrary manner. Um, the people who try to enforce misinformation rules in my own case, just as in the case of all of the other people here, do not even attempt to be objective, to be accountable, to give co coherent reasons or an explanation of why they censored you. They just say you committed a mis misinformation offense, which just goes to the heart of this issue, which is that misinformation is a proxy for the abuse of power in the public sphere. And, and, that, and, and just the last thing I'll say, uh, conscious of the time, is that the reason I got into the COVID debate was not because I love controversy. I don't particularly like controversy, um, but it's because I recognized from very, very early on that the kinds of restrictions, the kinds of measures that were being introduced in the name of controlling uh, infectious disease were setting down enormously dangerous precedents and were basically putting our civil rights and liberties in jeopardy not only at that moment, but for the foreseeable future. So it was that dangerous precedent that really disturbed me. And when I saw, you know, the policing of exercise, the policing of park visits, the policing of household visits, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that's the reason I got into this. And I'm delighted and I want to give Elon Musk credit for restoring people's accounts on Twitter so that we can have a proper debate again. Yes, yes. I'll give him credit when he restores mine. Well, yes, exactly, Nick. And I have to say, <laughs> just to say, Nick, I'm, I'm, I'm really disgusted that your account hasn't been, hasn't been restored. I don't understand why that hasn't been done. But I hope that as we, we, we should all put more pressure on to make sure that happens.